welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're not reviewing the Vortex Viper. We're going to be taking a look at the trigger cam. Now, having a trigger cam or having a scope camera, a camera scope, uh, is really nice and, and, and kind of fun to do. Because, I mean, you can see whatever you're, you're hunting. It's really nice to really relive, relive those hunting moments. Uh, now, keep in mind, I'm not going to be hunting or shooting any animals in this video. I'm strictly going to be shooting targets and uh, some other stuff. So, that's going to be kind of fun. Anyway, let's start talking about the product. So uh, the first thing you're going to notice of this, it's pretty much a one piece, a pretty solid piece. It's with, that's kind of a really nice thing that I was actually looking for. I wanted something simple, like stupid simple. <laughs> you don't really want to be messing around with too many settings while you're either on a hunt or anything. That's just morbidly inconvenient. So uh, with this, it comes with a bunch of inserts and obviously a charging cable. I'll show you how to use that. So you have a bunch of inserts. You're gonna to need to find out which insert fits on your scope. So in this example, we're gonna be using the Vortex Crossfire 2. Crossfire 2, Viper, Viper, not the Crossfire 2. So, uh, obviously not, where is the right size? Nope. Ah, this is the one, all right. So you are gonna to need to find the model that you, the size that fits. It should have a, just a tiny gap. Have a look there, there's a, just a tiny gap. That's all you're gonna want. So you're gonna slip it over with the gap facing downwards. Obviously turn this in all the way if that's what you need and you fit it on. Now you're going to put the trigger cam over it very simply like that. This will go upwards and then you're going to tighten the screw at the bottom. All right, so it's nice and tight and snug, and it's ready to be uh, zeroed on the rifle. So before we go to that, I'm gonna show you guys a bit about how this kind of thing works. You're gonna use this, you're gonna use this tool to open the SD card and the charging port. So let's just, So here you're gonna have your charging port. It's just a micro, S, a micro USB. And here you have your SD card. So you can just push this and it'll come right out. That simple. It comes with a 15 uh, gigabyte, what is it? Is it an Ultra? Yeah, it's in SanDisk Ultra. So this, this is a pretty good SD card. Now, mind you, you might wanna put a larger SD card because I mean, you don't really know when your deer is gonna come out and if you have your, your camera on, although you could really just turn it on and you're ready to go immediately when your deer comes up. But that's maybe just one more thing that you know, you're gonna to have to watch for. So, so this does have a rubber O-ring in order to prevent moisture and water to get in. So we're just gonna tighten it back up. And next is the focus. So this is not an autofocus, which originally I thought was kind of great. I kind of don't like having technology managing everything on my, my products. Um, it has this little autofocus here. So this is kind of good and kind of bad because I mean, I kind of like doing things myself, although I realized pretty quickly is that I can't tell perfectly on my phone if it's focused. So yes, I said my phone. You cannot just look through this and set the focus. That is a complete waste of time. It always looks focused. <laughs> uh, you're gonna have to pair this with your phone and, um, and then play with the focus until it looks pretty much as sharp as you can kind of tell. Which, I mean, there's a pretty broad range of what looks sharp and then what really is actually sharp once I expand it on the computer. So in the end, I'm gonna have to say that is a bit of a negative thing um, that it doesn't have an autofocus. Cause I mean, a computer in this, a sensor can much better, it can do it much better than I possibly could staring at my tiny screen on my phone going, that looks pretty sharp. So gotta say an autofocus would be a big advantage. Now you really only ever need to do this once. So once you've set it, you can just put your cap back on and just leave it on your rifle. And even if you did take it on your rifle, provided the trigger cam is seated all the way, you could just take it off and put it back on and it'll always be set for the proper, uh, the proper focus. So that also is kind of cool. So once you're done setting your focus, you just uh, snug this back up and you're ready to go. Turning it on is also fairly simple. You hold the power button. Beep. So it's on. It is not recording, mind you. So 
you will know that it's on because there is a blue light. You probably can't see it because it's really bright here. Yeah. So next step, if you want to start recording, you would hit the power button again. And the green light here would start flashing. So that's how you know you are currently recording. Uh, now this one does only film in 1080p at 30 frames per second. So it has a good high definition resolution, but a moderately low frame rate. So 30 frames per second is still good, but it's, it's not as good as 60 frames per second. So personally, I would have preferred it had it been 60 frames per second, but hey, Anyway, uh, also you are, so for the first time, you are gonna need to pair this with your phone. So we're gonna stop the recording by pressing the power button just once, not holding it. Holding it, remember, just turns it off. So we're going to need to turn on the Wi-Fi on this device. So there is a little Wi-Fi button here. Uh, if you are in your home while you are attempting to pair it, you'll have to clear your, uh, your uh, registered Wi-Fi's in the house. So I would have to essentially get rid of my home Wi-Fi because it'll always try to reconnect with the home Wi-Fi and it's, it's kind of just annoying. It's actually easier to do at the range because there's no other Wi-Fi. So you're going to press and hold the Wi-Fi. Okay, so now our blue will be blinking. Yes, it's blinking. So it's going to be blinking. And now this is broadcasting a Wi-Fi signal. I would then go to my phone. So we're gonna to have to download the app in the Play Store, it's called Trigger Cam. And then we're going to open it. Now your app is going to be searching for the Trigger Cam. So you're gonna to have to click connect underneath the little image of the Trigger Cam. Once you do that, you would select the Trigger Cam, input the passwords, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And now it should be selecting that Wi-Fi in order to connect with your trigger cam. Mind you, once it is connected, you never need to bring your phone again on your hunt. Because I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm kind of a bad hunter. If I have my phone on me, I'm gonna just be browsing the web while nothing shows up because I'm actually not a very good hunter. <laughs> once, let's say you have connected it, you can press the little play button that has, it has some kind of hunter's image and you click on the little play button and it'll connect with your trigger cam. And then you would then set the focus. You'd unscrew this cap the little cap and play with the focus until it becomes really sharp and really crisp and clear in your phone. If you have maybe an iPad or something, that probably is the best bet in order to um, get the uh, reticle as sharp and get the image as uh, sharp as can be. So that's it for getting it set. Once you've done that, you're good to go. The things I have noticed though, I mean, I've put this on a three to 18 and I've put this on, well, uh, this optic as well. This is a six to 24 by 50. What I have noticed is that the higher magnifications, uh, it, it tends to darken out quite a bit. However, if I back it off back to like 17, uh, 16, it's actually much brighter. It tends not to grasp as much light as it could for the really, really high uh, magnification. So that's something to note. Now in the footage you are gonna see, you're, I'm gonna be shooting at 100 meters. Uh, I have it on a 223 with a zero MOA rail. This was in order to get the sharpest and clearest. So we're at the 100 meter range. I'm gonna be showing you guys what it looks like. I mean, this is at 24 magnification. As you can see, it's got a little bit of a dark ring. It tends to do that with the higher magnification optics. When you crank it back a little bit, well, it gets a little bit brighter and a little bit clearer. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, we're gonna be putting it at 24 magnification for the first few shots on paper. So anyway, that's shooting paper, but you know what? That's not good enough. We want to shoot something a little more interesting. We went a little bit bigger budget. Water bottles. But not just plain old water bottles, water bottles with food coloring. Now that's big budget. Let's put a few rounds down in those puppies. Let's watch them blow.
right, let's take out the big green one. First to the left. Boom! Ha <laughs> ha! Vaporized. Check out the big red. <coughs> Boom. <coughs> okay, I'm a little bit too excited. You know, I was really hoping it wouldn't blow the other ones right off, which is why I added extra duct tape, but at least we have one left. Just one, right in the head. Wow, they really just vaporize, don't they? <laughs> but it's so much fun. It's so much fun. So that was a lot of fun. Shooting those bottles is pretty damn awesome. Uh, so that's kind of the reason why I, I think, you know, having a scope camera is kind of fun. Uh, so a few things I do need to mention is this does have a microphone. Now I was listening to the audio from it and it sounds all like like that. What you guys heard while I was shooting is my uh, camera's external microphone, which is pretty good quality. So the microphone it does have one in this, but it's more like a second thought as opposed to, you know, its primary function. It's really just a camera. It's a good quality camera. And uh, talking about good quality camera, uh, have a look at this. So this is at 352 meters. And uh, normally I, I film through a GoPro uh, behind the optic and I don't get nearly as much fine detail as I did with the trigger cam. So this is actually what it normally looks like with my GoPro. And this is back with the trigger cam. So you can see a lot more fine details with the trigger cam than I normally ever could with the GoPro. So keep that in mind. This can pick up some a lot of fine details. Now remember, its limitations are it, the, its frame rate, its resolution, and its manual focus. So I found that manual focus a little bit inconvenient in the long run. I kind of would prefer an autofocus. So thanks for watching. And if you are interested in picking one up, contact Box to Bench Precisions, and they can have one sent out to you. See you next time on Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Mm -hmm.